Invasive species can be animals or plants, which in almost all cases or in most of them are species that are exotic, and that can occur accidentally or naturally. When we talk about an accidental way is by any climatic event, case, the Pelion, the Pelion, arrived by a climatic event that was a hurricane, which were in some fish tanks. The fish tanks broke and fell into the sea and from there they were distributed throughout the Caribbean. As it can also be intentional, someone on a trip brought an animal that got into a suitcase or brought a plant, because he picked it up and thought it was very nice and brought it, and somehow it became a species that could proliferate here, and became an invasive species. Yesterday, we were in, in Santa Elena. Today we are here in Medellin in the Bicentenario neighborhood. I wanted to bring you here because it is, it is something very particular. This urbanization is one of the largest urbanizations in Medellin and has had a very natural process of tree planting. That is. The same people have been responsible for planting everything we see now but there are also species that have come by its own means, as is the case of the Lucina. Where does the Lucina come from or what? Lucina was brought from Mexico and was originally planted in the country. We have records of collections of this species from the end of the 19th century. Beginning of the 20th century. There are collections made at the beginning of the 20th then, probably before, this species was already cultivated. But there are many in the city, but it is considered all that can be, it is an invasive species or as you might say. It is really catalogued as invasive. In fact there are countries like Spain where it is legally constituted as an invasive species, but doubts remain because it is not as aggressive as it is. The species that we saw in Santa Elena, that its reproduction is very high and they are generating a very marked damage. This surely also competes with the others but it is not, it is not as aggressive as the others. Lucina is a species of the legume family, it is native to southern Mexico from Oaxaca de Chiapas and was brought to Colombia around the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century. One of the purposes of bringing this special species to Colombia was to supplement protein for livestock. It is a good source of protein because like all legumes, it fixes atmospheric nitrogen through association with bacteria at the root level. All this is very good, it generates shade, comfort for the cattle and everything else. But it has a very high reproductive capacity in the wild. So this species has become feral. We already find it in different places without being sown by man without being propagated. But it has been doing it itself. So it represents a serious danger for the local flora because it competes with them. Could we say that it is of some use to the natural environment? Of course. It is a good source of fodder for livestock and with it, then, what we do is to provide a nutritional supplement for the farmer, so that the farmer can supplement his livestock. In other words, 
we are making a species that has had a practical use in that sense. They will really bring it with the purpose of being a protein addition for livestock. But it has gone out of control. It is one of those species that has been reproducing itself and has become feral. Ah well. I would like to show you later on as mature trees so that you can explain to us in detail about the plant. For example, we can see it here. Lucina then whose scientific name is Lucina leucocephala, is characterized by having a compound leaves that is divided twice then technically we call it a bipinnate leaf that have hectares at the base of each of these leaflets. Here we will find a hectare that nourishes produces and everything else sugars. This plant also has, produces a flower head a package with a sphere of white flowers somewhat brown that when they are fertilized pollinated by bees especially will produce a lot of fruit. These fruits are the legumes that have dehiscence that is to say they open, release 10, 15, 20 seeds and the germination rate is very high most of them germinate therefore one individual of these produces I would say almost an infinite number of propagules from seed It has a bit of aroma like all legumes when one squeezes the leaves You notice the typical smell of legumes which is a little difficult to define But it smells like legumes it has a size that can reach a considerable growth, with stems of good diameter. But in initial stages it is a small shrub that one might think that it will not reach a larger size. But, we find it all over the city and all over the country and here in Medellin it is very frequent on the banks of the Medellin River and here. In the Tricentenario it is widely distributed, because some individuals were planted and those individuals generated many more, which is the problem we see today. Many of the Lucina species have spread naturally throughout this property because I believe that no one has planted them because look here and there. There are these. These are already mature trees associated with other species such as this is a what. Strangely for the moment when they made this type of of urbanization they generated a very atypical urban woodland, and I would say not very suitable, because for example we see here Europeans. The Europan is a Mexican species that has been proven that the pollen generates respiratory joy and the lucina that an individual is planted and that individual produces an enormous amount of seeds. As we can see here, of course look at the amount of fruits and leguminous seeds. It has a great advantage and it fixes nitrogen. So it is a good source. But if we look from here upwards, we see that practically all this lucina and nobody planted it. This is basically a natural action. Yes of course, of which. Let's look at it here. Look at this one here. Here that is in fruit. 
Well yes, this is a species, that really is an interesting species, because of what we were saying about nitrogen fixation, a supplementary source let's say in livestock. The danger lies in that it has an enormous reproductive capacity, and that makes the populations of this increase greatly without control. This is a leguminous plant, right, the name of the scientist is Lucina leucocephala. It is native to southern Mexico, like Huajaca of Chiapas of that zone and it was planted here in the country, probably at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, where it began to be attracted to the country to fill, right. In its natural environment it is a species that provides a great amount of benefits here as well, but the danger lies in its capacity to be invasive. We recognize it because it has compound leaves, divided. It has some glands here that feed, feed ants. So it defends itself with them by giving them nectar in these, in these glands so that the herbivorous ants attack other ants, right, that can affect them. Yes, that they attack the herbivores that come to eat. It does not have so much enemy. It is a species that grows quickly. Very fast the wood is a little balsa. Not very dense and produces a great quantity of fruits. This is one of those fruits where you can find some 15, 20 and even more seeds right. With a very high germination. Also most of them germinate. Then, for the case of Medellin look that around the Medellin River almost everything is full of this right. The banks of the Medellin River. Are examples of the invasive plants that we have in our environment, grasses. Why don't we go and look and see, let's try to find one with a flower so we can take a good look. The Alexander von Humboldt Institute says that there can be more than 100 invasive species between animals and plants, so it is our duty as responsible people if we bring in plant material, to check that it is not going to become a problem. We must clarify that there is no total consistency in the term of using an invasive qualification for this species, Some defend the species as a source of fodder, with a source of protein and say that it is not very resistant to shade. So when the plant is not in full light, it will have problems of germination, growth and so on. Can it be eradicated? Of course, the problem lies in the fact that as it produces so many seeds, the seed bank at soil level is very large and they will continue to germinate. So one of the things would be a control, a long-term control, so that the plant that regenerates and sprouts and germinates is eliminated to prevent it from having a greater dominance. But this is one of the examples. The Alexander von Humboldt Institute makes an inventory of about 35, 40 but there is a large number that are not there. So I would think that invasive plants, both arboreal and herbaceous or shrubby and aquatic, could be close to 100. With some potential, some more aggressive and others less than the others. There are tastes in terms of ornamentals, speaking of plants, that can trigger and promote this type of invasions. We must be very careful with which plants are also being sold, both as urban trees and as ornamental plants because many of them can be an invasion in the short term. Any action we take against these species 
will affect us. So it is simply a matter of conserving our biodiversity, 